So interoperability is one of the key things that Bluetooth SIG prides itself on. I was talking to a, um, a colleague of mine who's just started out uh, with Bluetooth. And he was asking, well, how long does it take to get a specification through the Bluetooth SIG? And I said, well, you know, if we're starting now, it will probably take about a year, maybe 18 months. It depends on how long it will take to prototype. And there was a pause, and he says, what do you mean prototype? I mean, we write the specification, then we make sure that people can implement the specification and build products. And only after we've done that do we actually adopt the specification. He says, nobody else does that. And I said, yeah, nobody else ships two and a half billion devices every year. And he goes, yeah, you have a point. Bluetooth is successful in my mind because we do do interoperability testing. We do make sure that the specifications we write work before we get them adopted. We do care about interoperability. So some of the ways that we do that within the Bluetooth SIG is part of the qualification system. So there's the test and qualification, there's the listing process, there's the end product listing process, there's various fees and test requirements associated with that. Uh, if you'd like more, then there's the URL on the screen uh, at technical slash qualification slash home.htm at the bluetooth.org website uh, where you can find a lot more information about this. You yourself, though, when you're creating a product, will want to build your own test plan. To do this, again, it's very, very simple. You can go to the test uh, tool site under the qualification on the bluetooth.org website and hopefully you're going to read the specifications before trying to implement a product. I know people who've not done it that way, but most people will read the specification and then implement it, rather than implement it and then read the specifications. That's not normally a good thing. But if you read enough of the specification, then you should also be able to read the test case reference list that you would effectively apply to your product. The test case reference list is a huge document. It's actually a very unwieldy document. It takes about three months to revise it. It takes three months to work out how to revise it and three months to revise it. And every six months, there's a new test case reference list that goes out. So all of this becomes very, very complicated. You can fill in your implementation conformance statements, work out what features you need mandatory, what optional features you implement, what optional features you don't and you can read the testing specifications to see what test cases apply. Or you just go to the Bluetooth SIG website, go to the test plan generator, fill in your X on the website, and it gives you the list of everything, and you don't have to worry about anything. So you can do it by hand. I would not recommend it. I'd recommend that you go to the uh, Bluetooth SIG website, you find the test plan generator, you fill in the X, it, it, it makes sure that everything is right. So if, for example, you've got a profile and you've, you've ticked on the profile, but you've not ticked on something that's mandatory for that profile, then it will prompt you to say, this is invalid. And then you can get the list of tests. So there are a number of ways of doing the testing. Obviously, we can implement a test plan uh, using a commercial Bluetooth test lab. Uh, you could use the test tools that the Bluetooth SIG provides, like, for example, PTS. The Bluetooth SIG profile tuning suite is actually an excellent tool and is, and is getting better um, all the time and provides all the testing that you need to do for your products. The other one, of course, is you can go to a Bluetooth Unplug Fest. Bluetooth Unplug Fests are held three times a year. They're geographically spread around the planet. So in January, February time, they're normally in the Americas, uh, typically the week before the Super Bowl or the week after the Super Bowl, that sort of time frame. Uh, June is typically held in Asia, uh, in APAC. So this year it's in Bangkok, for example, uh, the beginning of June. And then October time is normally in Europe. And I think this year we're going to Vienna. Um, so it's a lovely, lovely uh, event to go to. It's very, very hard work. Um, we force the engineers to work for at least nine or 10 hours a day. 
Um, they don't get any breaks, literally don't get any breaks. They might have an hour off for lunch if they remember, but we don't actually remind them that it's lunchtime. If they, if they miss lunch, they miss lunch, hard luck. Um, we have had some people who've come out from their 12 o'clock testing session at two o'clock in the afternoon and go, where's lunch? And we go, well, it finished at half past one. And we go, there is still a cafe open. So the Unplug Fests are actually one of the most valuable events that we put on. And it is an opportunity for the developers and testing engineers to meet all their peers in a single location. The other interesting thing about the Unplug Fest is that it is an engineering only event. People who have marketing in their job title are not allowed to attend this event. People who have sales in their job title are not allowed to uh, attend this event. It is only engineers, and it's an under an NDA, it's under a non-disclosure agreement, which means that when you go there, you can't discuss what happens at that event with anybody else apart from your immediate need to knows. So your manager may need to know, but the marketing department, you're banned from telling the marketing department who you tested with and how that testing occurred. It is a very, very safe environment to take prototype equipment to or do interoperability testing at. I highly recommend Unplug Fest. I've been supporting them since many, many years now. God, over 10 years now I've been supporting Unplug Fest. And I, I can't speak highly enough of them. So remember that when you're looking at building a Bluetooth product, there's a number of things you need to remember. First of all, remember the market focus. Who are your customers and why are they going to buy products from you? So it's not just around the fact that you're going to put Bluetooth in your product, but why are you choosing Bluetooth? Is it because you want to get and talk to all those billions of cell phones out there that have Bluetooth in as well? Is it because you want to use one of the standardized profiles so that your device can talk with uh, the phone when it makes a phone call? Or is it because you've got an input device like a really funky mouse that you want to connect to a tablet or a computer or uh, a projector or something like that? If you use a standardized profile, then does that meet the needs that your customers have? If it doesn't, then perhaps you need to invent something new. Perhaps you need to come along and find some other people who have similar interests. So let's take the example that's happened in the last couple of weeks. The hearing aid industry want to use Bluetooth because they understand that Bluetooth is going to be lower power, lower cost than anything else out there, and it's already in the cell phones. And that's one of the key use cases that they want to enable. So if we've got the hearing aid industry wanting to do this, that's more than one company. So they actually got two or three companies together and a few of the other parts of the ecosystem, mobile phone manufacturers, et cetera, and came to the Bluetooth SIG and said, we want to do hearing aids. And they created what is known as a new work proposal. They wrote this document that's only a couple of pages long, very, very simple. You're just outlining what you're trying to do, who supports it, who's going to lead the study group, and then they've got a study group. It is literally that simple. And that study group goes on to create a requirements document, and that requirements document gets reviewed, make sure it's nice and clear. Once it's reviewed, then it becomes a working group. The working group creates a 0.5, a 0.7, a 0.9. The 0.9 document becomes a prototyping spec. The prototyping spec gets tested, typically an unplug fest, to make sure that it's all interoperable. And then it gets adopted as a Bluetooth SIG specification. So the process itself is very, very simple if you can find other people. So if you've got an idea for a new profile, just wander around here, randomly ask people, hey, have you thought about doing the rabbit hutch uh, profile? The what? The rabbit hutch profile. You've not heard of it? It does this. And you tell them what it does and find a few people, write a new work proposal, submit it. Two weeks later, you'll be chairing a study group. It's that simple. Obviously, if you want to chair a study group, that's the best way of doing it. If you can't find other people, if you are really looking at something really proprietary, then you can roll your own. You can use a proprietary UUID and create your own profiles, own services. 
And always remember to test your profiles to ensure interoperability. I can't stress this enough. Bluetooth succeeds because we have great interoperability. Bluetooth is selling in the billions because they work with each other. And they always work with each other. So when you look at your products, don't think about, OK, I've got this one phone from this one manufacturer and my device, and it works. Go off and test it with every single phone. There are companies out there that can help you do that. There are Bluetooth SIG can help you do that. So there's no excuse. If you don't turn up to an unplug fest, if you don't test with other people, then you know we can't help you. Bluetooth SIG puts all these events on to help you get great interoperable products out there. That's all I've got to say on profiles and interoperability. I, 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 well, actually, it's not all I can properly say on profiles and interoperability, as you probably noticed. That's all I'm going to say at this point. Okay, thank you very much.